In this video, we're going to learn how to mask a credit card number using Python. So to mask a credit card number means to hide a certain number of digits in the credit card number. We might do this to prevent somebody from looking over the user's shoulder and seeing their full credit card number. Now credit cards typically have 16 digits, but they could have less or more. So for example, a credit card might look like this. We might have credit card one, and we could have 16 digits. We'll have 3776, and then we'll have 2227, and we'll have 5087, and we'll have 8661. So here we have 16 digits total in this credit card. And if we were to mask all but the last four digits in this credit card number, using the star character to mask the digits, we would have here, 12 stars, and then these last four digits here, 8661, would be displayed. And this would be the masked credit card number. We could have credit cards represented in different formats. So for example, we could have so that every four digits of the credit card are separated by a space. We could have credit card two is equal to, and we'll have 5545, 42, three, four, and six, three, eight, one, and seven, one, nine, two. So here, every group of four digits in the credit card number is separated by a space. We could also use other characters to mask the credit card digits. So for example, we could use the pound character. So if we were to mask the first 12 digits of this credit card using the pound character, it would look like this. We would have pound, 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 and pound, and another four pounds, and another four pounds, and then we would have 7192. And this would be this credit card masked using the pound character. So let's create a flexible function which allows us to mask credit card numbers. We'll make it flexible in the sense that we can supply an argument to determine the number of digits to leave unmasked. So if we pass in five, then this credit card would look like this when it's masked. We would have five unmasked digits. We could also allow the function to determine via an argument which character to use to hide the digits. So if we use star, it would look like this. If we use pound, it would look like this. Let's create the function. We'll call the function mask credit card. And the function is going to have three parameters. The first parameter is going to be the string of the credit card itself. We'll just call that credit card. The second parameter is going to be the number of digits that are going to be left unmasked. We'll call that unmasked digits. We'll have unmasked digits here, and we'll set a default value of four for this parameter. We'll also have the mask character. So we'll have mask character for that parameter. And by default, is going to be the star character. So by default, it's going to be star if that argument is not provided to the function. So if we want to mask all but the last four digits of credit card one with the star character, we could call the function like this. We could have mask credit card and we could pass it credit card one and just that argument because the default value for unmasked digits is going to be four and the mask character is going to be star by default. Now, if we wanted to mask all but the last five digits of this credit card with the pound character, we would have here five and pound as the second and third arguments. So that way we mask this credit card up to the last five digits using the pound character. So let's implement this function now. The first thing we'll do is determine the total number of digits in the credit card. And we'll actually use a list comprehension to help do this. So here we'll have a list comprehension with C dot is digit for each character C in the credit card string. So this is a list comprehension. It's going to produce a list where for each character C in the credit card string, we're going to use the is digit method. Now technically C is not a character, Technically, it's a string made up of one character. And isDigit is a method of strings in Python. It's going to return true 
if the character is a digit and false otherwise. So what this is going to do is produce a list of true and false values. They're going to be the return values of calling is digit for each character in the credit card string. So this digit here would return a value of true, but this character here would return a value of false because it's a space character and not a digit. Let's go over how this works with an example. We'll put the results of this list comprehension here with print. And with credit card one, every character in this string is a digit. So we should get 16 true values in this list here. If we save the program and give it a try here, we do get 16 true values here. Now, if we passed in credit card two, with credit card two, we have four digits and then a space. So we should have four true values and then a false value and then another four true values and then a false value. Let's try it. We'll save it and run it. And we do get four true values and a false value and then four true values and a false value and so on. So it is working. Now, what we can do is count the number of true values in that list. We could have here dot count and we'll have true. So this is the count list method and it's going to return the number of true values in this list. We could try this out. If we save the program and try it out, we'll get 16. If we had, let's say another digit in this credit card here, like five at the end here. Now, if we save the program and try it out, we'll get 17. So it's working. Now we know how many total digits there are in our credit card. So we'll store that number into a variable called total digits. Now, if the number of digits to leave unmasked is greater than total digits, that doesn't really make any sense. So we'll have a check for that. Well, if here, if the unmasked digits number is greater than the total number of digits we have, then we're either going to output an error message or maybe raise an exception or maybe return none. We'll do something to acknowledge that an error has taken place. Now we'll also find the total number of digits to replace. That's going to be the total digits minus the number of unmasked digits. So we'll have total replace digits is equal to total digits minus the unmasked digits. And this is going to be the total number of digits that we're going to replace. So for example, if we have 16 digits total and we're going to leave four digits unmasked, 16 minus four would give us 12 total digits to replace. Now to actually do the replacement, we could do it in a more manual way, or we could use a function from a module. I'll show you the more manual way first. So one way we could do it is to loop through the original credit card string one character at a time. And as we do, we'll build a new masked credit card string. Now, if we encounter a digit, we're going to replace it with the masked character. So long as we haven't already replaced total replaced digits, number of digits in the credit card string already. So we'll keep track of how many digits we've replaced using the variable digits replaced, which is initially going to be zero because we haven't replaced any digits yet. We'll keep track of the new masked credit card string using the variable masked credit card. And this is initially going to be the empty string because we haven't concatenated any characters to this string yet. Then we'll loop through the credit card string one character at a time. We'll have here for C in credit card. So this is going to loop through the credit card string one character at a time. And each time this loop body runs, C is going to be set to the next character in that string. Now, if that character C is a digit as determined by the is digit method, and if the number of digits we've replaced is less than the total number of digits to replace, then we're going to concatenate to the mask credit card string, the mask character, which will effectively replace that digit with the mask character in the new string that we're building. So we'll have masked credit card plus equals to concatenate 
And what we'll do is concatenate the mask character to that string. We'll also increment digits replaced by one because we have replaced another digit. Now, if that character is not a digit, or if we've already replaced the number of digits to replace, we want to just concatenate the existing character to the mask credit card string. So otherwise here we'll have else, and we'll just concatenate the existing character C to the mask credit card string with mask credit card plus equals C. And this will actually build the new mask credit card string. So after the loop is done, we can just return the mask credit card string with return mask credit card. And again, the way this algorithm works is that we're going through the string one character at a time and we're building a new string. So for example, if we go through this string here, one character at a time, what we would do is build this new string here, one character at a time. So as we encounter each digit, we're going to concatenate the mass character. So we'd have like star and star and star and star. And then here, when we have a character that is not a digit, we're going to just concatenate that existing character to the new string and then continue to concatenate the mass character as we encounter more digits. And this would continue so long as we have not yet replaced the total number of digits to replace. And at that point, once we have replaced the total number of digits to replace, then we'll stop masking the digits and instead we'll just concatenate the digits as they are. So maybe if we're going to leave the last five digits unmasked, at this point, we would have 71925. So let's test out our code now. I'll paste in that first example now with credit card one, and we'll try calling the function with credit card two and replacing all but the last five digits with the pound character. So we'll output the string returned by the function by using print, and we'll save the program and give it a try. And here we see all but the last five digits of that credit card number have been masked. Now we could do this in a simpler way using the regular expression module. What we'll do is import the regular expression module with import RE. Then down here, we're going to use the sub function in that module instead of all this code here. What we'll do is call the sub function and the first argument to the function is going to be what we're looking to replace in the string. We're going to have here backslash backslash D. What this stands for is a digit. And what we're saying is we want to replace digits in the string. We're going to replace those digits with the mask character string. And we're going to do this in the credit card string and we're going to replace total replace digits, number of occurrences of a digit. Now this function is going to return the new string after the replacements have been made, and we could just return that string. So down here, let's call the function with credit card one, and we'll replace all but the last six digits in that string and we'll use the default mask character star. So we're not going to supply that third argument this time. So if you save the program now and give it a try, we can see all but the last six digits in that credit card string have now been masked. So this is how we can mask a credit card using Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.